Jitu. <gasps> What's up, Jim? It's been a while since I've said that. Oh man, I miss you guys. Here comes Stewie. Uh, we like, just went and saw um a dog's a dog's way home. A dog's way home. <sighs> I cried like a baby. She Hi, cries baby. Like a we came home and we were like, Stewie, what are you doing? Never leave me. Anyways, our New Year's and our Christmas was fun. It was so fun. Dee Dee, it was so fun. Um, and actually, we took some time just to spend time with our family. And then right when we got back, Jekka had to start working on her TV show that she booked um, last month. So, so we've fun. just been like crazy busy. Um, but it's been like the most awesome time. We feel like completely grateful. Um, yeah. It's been great. Yeah. But that's why we've been kind of backed up on getting these. Yeah, we're backed up. But so, we wanted to um, kind of talk about something. Yeah, kind of start this off with pretty a. Special. Yeah. So one is coming up. Are you ready to go? We can take a ride. We can take it slow. Your will is my law. I'm going to let you be the boss. Because I'm going you go. When you fall down. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, Yekka, yay! Crowd goes wild, you should put like the audience cheering. <sighs> and another beanie. Hey, I got this one for Christmas from my mother-in-law. So we wanted to start this year off with a special video. A video with a bang. Kind of like... <laughs> Kind of a lead into the reason why we started this whole YouTube to begin with, just why she talks me into YouTube. <laughs> kind of why I talked her into doing this YouTube in the first place, but just something that has a, so much meaning, not in just like Jekka's life, but in my life, my family, your family. We've gotten so many questions about it, and just might as well. This is gonna be a very long discussion, so probably two parts of this conversation, which will lead into more um, conversations just in the, the beginning. future. <laughs> but um, yeah, this video is all about Jekka's top surgery. <laughs> top surgery is just the process of removing a female head. removing their breasts. About it. But it's not about it at all. That's like what the surgery is, but there's so much more that goes into it. Right. What we, we want to talk about is everything leading into it. Like, uh, yeah. you know, kind of my realization of how insecure I was about having them, uh, not even for years and not even realizing that I was even insecure about it. For me, it was coming to terms with the idea of like, oh, top surgery wasn't related necessarily to trans being transgender and that's a whole other topic that we want to talk about too mm -hmm. but for me it was like I tied those two things together so unless when I, you want them to come together, yeah right it, yeah it, yeah. it, depends, it, it can be separate work totally together. yeah so for me it was I understood that those two things were the same like if you got top surgery you had automatically to automatically right, exactly I first started it uh, learning about how to start from a friend of a friend and they told me, do you have Kaiser? And I was like, I have Kaiser. And they were like, just talk to your general doctor. And I was like, okay. And which Kaiser has a really awesome... Well, I didn't know that at first. So yeah. I go into my general doctor and I say, well, first I go in because I had just gotten an insurance, so they need to do a, a full, full workup on me. So I go <laughs> in and I'm thinking in my mind, the main reason why I'm here is because I want to talk about what my friend had told me, like how to guide me through, you know, how to get to a plastic surgeon. But in order to get to the plastic, plastic surgeon, you have to go, you have to tell, first of all, you have to tell your doctor, your general doctor. And the day that I get there, I freeze completely. And I was like, I don't even know what, to, I don't even know what to say. I literally have no what to say, no words. And so she was like, is there anything else? And I was like, you came home and told me that. I was like, I was like, I no, I don't have anything else, and I left. And so I come home and I tell her. You thought that she, you came home and you said you thought that she was gonna judge you. 
Well, yeah, because I don't know this person. Right. So I go back in the next week, I think. I forget what I make an appointment for. <laughs> and I told her, um, I was like, I, I, uh, I don't remember how I said it exactly, but I was like, I, I want top surgery. And I think for her, the doctor, her first instinct was to say, um, like, do you have cancer in your breast cancer? Or does breast cancer run in your family? And stuff like that. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, shit. like, hold on, I need to be a little bit more specific on like what I'm talking about. So she's pulling, I can see her on the computer, like searching for like just something to click or whatever. I don't even know how the doctor's notes work, but finally at the very bottom, she scrolls down and you see um, top surgery, transgender in parentheses. So she clicks on it and then that kind of sends me into this uh, kind of uh, like a roller coaster. I just remember the next step was that I had to attend this gender orientation class. I don't remember that. I don't remember getting, I don't remember coming home with paperwork about top surgery from Dr. Decor, whatever her name is. Yeah, cause she, it came with like a little paper that you had your time and it gave you um, some s slip or whatever and then you went to the transgender orientation, orientation and you had a full on packet and I was waiting cause we had a studio in the car and we were coming from the bay and then they read the packet in the car. Yeah. But like to me, I didn't even know, like, I was like, what transgender? I thought you were getting top surgery. I didn't know you were transitioning. Remember we had that conversation? Yeah. Or that was crazy to me too, where they don't even differentiate the idea of top surgery versus people who are transitioning. They did, right? They do. So then, so why and somebody who's getting top surgery has to be labeled as transgender? That's so what they were saying though, is that like, that's just how it is. I know, but why? That's what I'm saying, like it's... Maybe that's just how it is for Kaiser. Yeah. So that process went, I had to go to transgender orientation, which I thought was really cool, because when I walked in, I thought it was cool that there were, you know, a circle of maybe 20 people of all ages and all genders and all, like, you know, different paths of, of, of where they're at in their transition or their surgery or their process being in one room. And for me, it was such like a eye opener because I've never been surrounded by uh, people, that many people at one time. Right. And it was terrifying for me in the most honest and respectful way. Like I, I didn't know anything about it. Like as soon as Jekka told me, she had already been talking about it for like about a year or a few months, like eight months. And as soon as she told me, it got pretty quick turnaround into her having surgery and then it being a transgender orientation. So I was just very fearful. I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. But I just saw Jekka come out into the truck and just be ecstatic about everything. But I think like also like as, as monumental as it is for somebody who's like you, who's getting the surgery, male or female, or who is eventually transitioning, or having you know some gender questions, whatever. It's also valid for their partner to have questions, and to be worried and concerned, or you know, I don't have those so much anymore. I mean, I do a little bit, but like it's so much easier to talk about with you now. I think it's okay to have fear on both ends. When I first started getting into like researching top surgery and all that stuff, I went, the first place I went was to YouTube because I feel like that's where everyone gets all their information. So top, type in top surgery and you know, what pops up is, you know, people's journeys and people's this and that and the other. And, and you know, it's, it's the same thing as on Instagram, you're only really gonna show the good shit. No one's gonna talk about the shit, you know? And the hard part and the the struggles and the, and that's I think just as important as the glory of it. Cause a lot of the times I feel like the information that people are looking for is like, this is happening to me. So, you know, you go to type it on the internet and you can't find, you can't find that information. So what, so now- Also, sorry, don't mean to cut you off, but 
Also, don't you think like when you were researching it, a lot of it was just a like double incision because that's what people were posting as that's what top surgery was. Oh no, I was seeing keyhole, keyhole oh, okay. parallel too. Oh, okay. I was seeing people who had keyhole that were having a lot of issues. They were getting like infections. Oh, okay. I was seeing people who were that, yeah. getting the double incision who were um, scared that their incis incisions were going to be too low and their, their, the placement of the aerial, because you're not in control of that, obviously you're asleep. So these are all things that you talk about with your surgeon prior to going into the surgery and that's something that I also want to talk about too because I think that's something that I wish I was a little bit more specific where I feel like I was being very specific with my surgeon but then all of a sudden, you know, okay, that's, that's a whole history. So I see the, my psychiatrist probably three or four times and then I get the okay to see the plastic surgeon which was like a big deal because we were traveling at the time and I get the call and I was really excited that I was like, oh, I get to see the plastic surgeon finally for the first time, remember? Remember? Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> and it was kind of like a waiting, it was kind of like a waiting game. And um, so finally being able to talk to a plastic surgeon about it um, was like a super glorious moment, but at the same time, you know, I was expecting to get keyhole you know, which, you know, is the kind of top surgery where they go around the areola and then move everything that way. Or periola where they cut like a donut shape and then resize everything. And um, so he was, he kept telling me because of the size of my breasts. Well, he didn't know that until you were under, when you were in surgery. Right, well, That's what I'm saying like, by based off of what he was looking at, he was saying that he wanted to do uh, this kind of like, fish mouth where he went. Uh, which is similar to period. Which is, yes, yeah. completely very similar, but he was like, we're gonna do like a, it's gonna look like this, and then down, or circular, and then across. Which, my biggest concern was, how long is that scar gonna be on either side? Right, like I don't want chest. any scar. Like I didn't want it to be across my air chest, or under my areola, and then all the way across. I would've rather just had double incision or, or even just like you know what scar you're getting into, like you don't know the length I of didn't, the... I wouldn't, no, I, I didn't want, I was thinking it was okay, because he kept saying it's gonna be a little, it's a, a little tiny incision on this side of your areola, under, and then a little one on the other side, and I was thinking, okay, so after, you know, after this meeting, I went home and I researched this kind of surgery, and I was seeing people who had the scar that went all the way across their chest, under the areola and then all the way to the middle of their chest. And I was like, I don't want that because I'd rather just have the scar hidden under where do more my sh where the, the the shadow, I guess, would be. So I was like, I definitely- masculine pec. Right, to hide inside of that, that, that zone, yeah. Right, so I didn't want it to come across my chest like that because I've seen that. And that's just my, my personal preference, and so. And you're paying for it, so you should get the same. Absolutely, but so when I went back in, I was telling him like I, you know, I saw this person and I took a screenshot of it. This is how I see it, and I did. And he was like, "No, my scars like this." And he had actually shown me a photo of a person that he had done this type of um, incision on. And so I was like, "That's great. I can't even see the scar. Perfect." You know, he was like, "We don't have to do a big uh, revision on your areola. Like it's gonna be fine." And I was like, "Cool." You know, I was like, my biggest concern was that there were circles. <laughs> yeah. That's all, like, but, my, my biggest, biggest, biggest concern was that there were going to be circles, but... It wasn't, um, also, um, it wasn't really, like, said to him, this is my, my vision. You saw that person's chest and stuff right. like that. And he kept saying, well, an oval... Areola is natural for a man because n no, like cis male is born with perfect areola, so it looks more surgical. Natural. It looks more natural for it to be an, like kind of like a oblong. An, an, an oval. Yes, yeah, so that's that's what I'm saying. It's like it looks more like surgical if you give um, somebody who's having surgery a perfect circular. Right. So we were like, oh, okay, like if you're doing like a little bit of an oval, fine, because Jekyll will develop a pec muscle, whatever. And that's what we talked about, and then... So I was cool, I was cool with it. I was cool, <coughs> and then it ended up, so we get into, you know, I finally get my surgery date. I'm super hyped. 
It's right before Coachella. It's fine. <laughs> Still gonna have surgery. Go to surgery. Wake up the next day. Obviously, cannot see my chest. Well, surgery was on the flip side, like awful. It was very difficult. I was told maybe two, three hours max. Ended up being six, six hours. Six, seven hours later, I like was trying to bust through saying, Jekka can't wake up on anesthetic by herself. Um, he had told me and um, her mom in the elevator, I had to give her more um, oval nipples because her breasts were um, very more dense a lot larger than anticipated. So Jekka has always worn very, like she said earlier in the video, sports bra, white beater, shirt, jacket. Like she, she didn't strap them down. I was like she binding without binding. Yeah. In a sense. And um, so her, her breasts were um, a full C cup, which we thought like <laughs> were like maybe maybe minimum A because. Had no idea that all that was under him. So he was just like, I wanna like, which, and I, I keep telling Jekka, like we're still going through the process of getting her aesthetic to what she wants it to look like, but also she doesn't have two underlining big scars because. Which, I, I mean, to, to be honest though, like, like I would have been, I would have been fine with that. I would have been fine with that. It's the idea of going into the surgery thinking like this is how it's gonna be, when then coming out of it, and that's not what it was. That's. But what, what, what the doctor, the surgeon has said to me was like, I couldn't physically bring the areola smaller because I couldn't get everything out, and then it would have left Jekka's nipple um, dead. I was just like, we, um, like, Jekka had quit full on smoking so that the, the nipple was healthy. Like I was just, in me, in my opinion, I said I would rather have for her a healthy nipple because it could be resized. And I'm, it's, I take full responsibility for it being not aesthetically correct, but I just thought maybe, um, I don't know. I guess it's kind of my fault a little bit. What? Like, I don't know. He, he told me like that's, you know, like you, your breasts were too big, you know, and your nipple would have died. Your aerial nipple would have died. But that's how a lot of people you follow on Instagram, like when they resize the nipple, they like cut it out and they just place it on, but it doesn't have sensation. And Jekka's aerial nipple has sensation. Just the right one. Yeah, but um, it, yeah. But you also don't have scars underneath, I don't know. I think the the thing that hurt me the most was going into surgery, I understood that my scar was gonna go a little bit across, under, and then over to the other side, but it ended up being now, if I were to show you my scar right now, is this very large stretched out scar around my whole areola, which is, I can't complain because I got the surgery and I'm happy about, I'm happy about it, but the, the, when I look at it and I see, what? 